Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about the advice that I would give myself if I were to start my perfume collection from fresh. What would I say to myself having been on YouTube in the fragrance community for a few years now? What have I learnt about my tastes and also what have I learnt about what I want from fragrance? And really what have I learnt about YouTube and how YouTube works? So if this kind of content interests you, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And also please like this video if you do end up liking this video. So I've got 10 points and I'm just going to go through them one by one. So my first point would be really referencing my naivety when I first started doing perfume YouTube. I really had no concept of how YouTube works and I really didn't understand that influences even existed. I hadn't really been watching YouTube much at that point in my life. And I didn't understand that people got things for free and then sort of felt like they had to talk about them. And I didn't understand that people got paid to promote things and didn't declare it either. And really, that is quite a big part of Perfume YouTube and is something that I'm very suspicious of. When I see a particular brand spreading across YouTube like Wildfire, a brand perhaps that I've never heard of before and being really, really hyped, then that immediately sets off alarm bells. But I don't think that would have set alarm bells off for me three or four years ago. That just wouldn't have even even flashed up in, in front of my eyes. I just wouldn't have realised. So I think for me, it would be to take everything you see on YouTube with a pinch of salt, especially if the person with the channel uses affiliate links because they get paid every time somebody buys a fragrance through those affiliate links. So there is a really big driver for them to make you want to purchase a fragrance. Those affiliate links can be anything up to 10%. So it really is very lucrative for some people to try to promote certain fragrances on their channels. And that is particularly true of the larger channels. So yeah, I think that's something that I just didn't realise that perhaps people have a vested interest in promoting certain fragrances and may not be entirely honest in their opinions of them. I also think that really fragrance is something that's very subjective and I think it took me a while to realise that my taste is not somebody else's taste. I can't watch a video and just copy somebody else's perfume collection because it wouldn't be the perfume collection that I would want. You have to really know a channel to be able to judge how well their taste aligns with your own and I think that's really something that I would tell you know Claire from a couple of years ago. I think ultimately that's the kind of subjectivity with fragrance is really the thing that attracted to me in the first place. I'm a scientist where I'm always looking for the truth, I'm always looking for the answer, I'm always looking for a definite yes or a no. Fragrance isn't like that, fragrance is very subjective and really that's the beauty of it, it's the fact that we can have different opinions, we can disagree but really everybody's opinion is valid. It's like love, it's like beauty, you know, they're both in the eye of the beholder, aren't they? Some Somebody might just not be attractive to you, but somebody else they could be everything. And that that is just, just like fragrance, really. So my next point is more of a practical one. I think when I first started my perfume collection, I was focusing on those sort of going out, big, loud, brash, um, darker fragrances. And I really didn't realise that I don't go out that much. I don't spend a lot of my evenings out. I'm usually sitting on a sofa watching some TV or doing some YouTube editing. Yeah, I have a social life very occasionally, but most of the time I spend my time at work or at home. And really my scent choices reflect that. And that's really where I wasn't concentrating my efforts on finding fragrances for those kinds of needs. I was looking at fragrances that were more for going out. So I think that's what I'd say to myself, you know, a couple of years ago, just, just realise what you're using your fragrances for and sort of buy accordingly. So thirdly, I would say to myself, don't be put off by note listings. Don't make a decision based on what the notes are as to whether you will like or dislike a fragrance. Try everything and keep an open mind. I think really for me, it's taken me a while to realise my major likes and major dislikes in fragrance. I think the dislikes were a little bit more um, sort of hidden in a way because when you try a fragrance and you're first starting out, you don't necessarily recognise individual things. You 
perhaps struggle with particular things that you've perhaps not smelt before. So, for example, things like Cipriol or things like Tonka or things like Heliotrope. You might not know how those things smell. You have to learn that. You have to learn that by comparing with fragrances that have those notes and trying to find the similarities between multiple different fragrances to be able to detect those notes in fragrance. Also something that I didn't realize about fragrance was just how differently different notes can smell in different fragrances. So for example, with vanilla, you might have a powdery vanilla or you might have a very rich gourmand kind of vanilla essence vanilla. Or for example, with patchouli, you might have a chocolatey patchouli, an earthy patchouli or a woody patchouli. Similarly with oud, you might have a medicinal oud, a synthetic oud, a woody oud, a smelly farmyard oud. You know, there, there's just a, a variety of different ways that the same note can smell in different fragrances. So you can see that fragrance is really complex. It's not something that where you can look at notes and go, oh yeah, that's got, I don't know, Cipriol in it. I'm not going to like it because I don't like Cipriol. Because Cipriol can smell you know, very, very strong, or it can smell very, very gentle, and it can be dominating or it can not be dominating. And that can really make or break whether I will like a fragrance or not, you know, for example. Point four would be that it's okay to dislike something that everybody else seems to like. YouTube is absolutely full of trends and it's full of these waves of different people buying the same fragrance. And people will just rave about it. People will go, oh yeah, this person, they, they love this fragrance and I bought it because of them. And actually I really love this too because it's amazing. And then the next person will buy it and they will say a similar thing. And actually, sometimes the hype is just not real, is it? I think for me as well, I just have slightly different taste to everybody else, understandably. And there are just some fragrances that I just don't jive with. It doesn't even have to be, you know, something that's been hyped. So for me, I, I remember when I first started, I, I just really didn't like Ariana Grande's Cloud. I just could not get with that fragrance. And that was everywhere on YouTube at the time. Similarly, Baccarat Rouge 540, never liked it. Just just couldn't stand that fragrance, just too cloying for me. Similarly, um, also John Paul Gaultier's La Belle. I also really didn't like that fragrance when it came out. And that one was just so hyped on YouTube. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody was raving about it. And I couldn't talk about it because I didn't like it. It's, it's just personal taste, isn't it? Everything is, is subjective and personal taste. But I'd just say that ultimately it doesn't matter. If you don't like a fragrance that everybody else likes, then just think of yourself as an individual. It doesn't mean that you're wrong. It doesn't mean that you you are somehow, you know, defective in your, your smelling abilities. It's just you're a different person. You have different tastes to everybody else. And that's a good thing. I think as well, you know, realizing that I didn't like fragrances that other people liked also made me see that I can appreciate a fragrance. I can think of fragrances well constructed, that it's artistic or that it's just a you know, a, a clever fragrance in a way without actually wanting to wear it or without actually liking it. And I think that's also something that it took me a while to realise that I can appreciate something yet still not like it or want to wear it. So yeah, that's another piece of advice that I would give myself. Be okay with not liking things that everybody else seems to love. So point five for me would be to tell myself that sampling is just as fun as buying a full bottle. And I think the reason I say that is because when I first started out, I wasn't really sampling. I was nuts. I was just blind buying fragrances, which is just so, so costly. And ultimately, sampling is going to result in a more curated collection. Sampling is the way to get fragrances that you love and only fragrances you love in your collection. So yeah, I think that would be another point really that I would make to myself, just enjoy sampling at an earlier stage before you start making huge inroads into making a perfume collection. Just take a step back and do some sampling. And I think I would also say to myself how to sample because I think really when I first started making YouTube videos, I wasn't testing fragrances properly. So the way I test fragrances now is actually over usually a, quite a long period of time. I will wear a fragrance, I will come back to it, and then it will test it several times over maybe even a few weeks even. And then only later on will I take notes because 
I often find those initial first impressions can be really, really off. They can be something completely different to what I finally smell in the end. And I think really taking that time to get to know something before I talk about it has really benefited me because I feel like I'm more sure in my opinions and I don't have that sort of issue where my opinion suddenly changes very much. I think my opinions, once they're formed, nowadays are pretty much my final opinion that I share on YouTube. They are, they're not something that is sort of fly by night and subject to change most of the time. So I think, yeah, sampling a number of times, sampling on skin and sampling over a long period of time, perhaps even over different seasons, is what I would suggest to people about sampling fragrances. I think with sampling too, it helps you to be pickier, doesn't it? Because if you don't sample a fragrance before you buy it, there's that guilt factor that you've bought it. And if you don't like it, then it's a waste of money. So you're almost willing yourself to, to like a fragrance. So I think really the way to that curated collection that you really, really love is to sample. So point six for me would be to know what I want from a fragrance's performance. So do I want a fragrance that lasts an eternity or do I want a beast mode fragrance? I think in the main, I have minimum levels of projection and longevity, but they are not the be all and end all. The be all and end all for me is a, a fragrance that tells a story, a fragrance that, that speaks to me, a fragrance that says something that I want to hear, that's sort of, you know, has a particular note in it that is beautiful or has a feeling to it that makes me want to wear it. And I think really the longevity and the projection are things that I can really compromise on for a really beautiful fragrance. So I think for me, the longevity, it has to be about three or four hours plus anything lower than that and I get annoyed and I think actually the projection can be anything from a skin scent I, I'm really happy with a skin scent in certain situations it depends what I want the fragrance for not everything has to be loud on me I don't have to have other people smell my fragrances my fragrances are for me and I think that's something that I've always felt actually throughout my perfume wearing life but I think you know having been doing this for a couple of years now I think my, my tastes in that have really been cemented but I think that's highly dependent on price point if I buy an expensive fragrance I do think I have the feeling that I want people to be able to smell it so yeah knowing what you want from a fragrance and appreciating that and learning that is something that I would also give myself advice about so point seven would be to tell myself not to believe those fragrance myths so, you know, you watch YouTube and you don't have to be special to make a YouTube channel. You don't have to be someone who knows anything about anything to make a YouTube channel. And that means that quite a lot of the information out there can be total rubbish. And I don't, I don't mean that unkindly. I just mean people just say what they believe. And some people believe some really, really weird things. So, I've heard, for example, people saying, don't rub your wrists together because you destroy the fragrance molecules. What is your wrist? A large hadron collider? Are you doing particle collision now? I mean, how can you smash a molecule apart? We are not, you know, nuclear physicists here with our wrists. This is not something that's going to happen. Okay, the top notes might warm up a little bit and you might, you might lose them by a nanosecond or a millisecond. But ultimately, it's so unlikely that rubbing your wrists together is going to actually affect the fragrance or how it wears in any way whatsoever. So point eight is realise that you can open Pandora's box and fall down a rabbit hole when you get into fragrance. So what I mean by that is that you can get obsessive about fragrance and you need to kind of almost be self-aware that this is a thing and this is happening because people end up buying a lot of fragrance and you can end up with a large collection very, very quickly. And it can be a collection of fragrances that you don't necessarily want. And I think that's something that I would tell myself when I was starting out a few years ago, that ultimately really making sure that every fragrance you're buying is something you really enjoy is an important thing when you're starting out because you can end up with a lot of dross very quickly. I think another thing is also about the quality of fragrances. So the quality of fragrances 
is something that you perhaps don't realise or you don't sense as much when you're first starting out because you haven't smelt as many fragrances. Quality, again, is something that's very subjective and it's something that when you smell a really nice fragrance and you compare it with something that's of low quality, you will suddenly realise the difference and it will mean that you can't go back to the fragrances that you previously loved because you will suddenly smell something different in them that you don't enjoy. And I'm going to say quality here because it's not cost. Some really expensive fragrances really don't jive with me. And it's something that I've really sort of been surprised by, really. So I think that's that's another thing. When you suddenly smell Ambroxan or you suddenly smell synthetic woods or you suddenly smell that really heavy cashmere in, in fragrances, then that is something that can be a bit of a revelation and can mean that you can't go back to fragrances that you previously enjoyed with those notes because it can just be a kind of overwhelming feeling that just dominates and ruins the rest of the fragrance for you. And it's something that necessar not necessarily you will actually notice to begin with when you first start smelling fragrances. It's something that comes with experience, being able to smell those notes and detect them in other fragrances. So yeah, realizing you can fall down rabbit holes of quality and quantity with fragrance and that discovering quality can be like opening Pandora's box with fragrance is another little piece of advice or warning that I would give myself. So point nine would be not to be greedy with fragrances. So what do I mean by that? I mean that when I first started out, when I had a smaller collection, I would nearly always buy the biggest size. And okay, when you've got one or two fragrances, that makes sense. When you particularly love a fragrance, that makes sense because you always want to have that fragrance and buying a larger bottle means that you've got more of it and you can if you're wearing it every day it will last longer but actually wearing fragrance if you have a larger collection you might only wear that fragrance two or three times a year if you've got 100 fragrances in your collection and you're you're fair about it so ultimately buying smaller bottles is probably the way to go because many of these larger bottles you will never ever finish unless you make some kind of conscious effort. And really, I think that's something that's, that's taken me a while to learn. And now I don't go for the best price per mil. I go for the cheapest price that I can find the fragrance for. And I think this also, this also sort of, you know, crosses over with my fragrance buying because I do buy a lot of fragrances secondhand and that's another way that I save money because buying fragrances new can be very, very expensive. If you buy fragrances secondhand, you can quite often resell them if you don't like them for a very similar amount. So that's another piece of advice that I would give myself. Don't buy the largest size automatically or the best price per mil. And also consider secondhand fragrances first or actually do some shopping around to find the best price for your fragrances. And my final point is really leading on from this one. So my point 10 is to take a break, to take a step back from your collection occasionally and just calm down and just sort of smell the fragrances, basically, because you can end up buying so many fragrances that you don't even try them all. You don't you don't learn how they smell. You, you don't wear them enough to know them. And I think knowing your fragrances and knowing that you love all of your fragrances and that you want to wear all of your fragrances can really help you if you're on YouTube because I think there's that thing, isn't there, the great unsprayed perfumes that are in everybody's collections that you've maybe tried once and then kind of pushed to the back of a cupboard somewhere and they just get left. And that's, that, that's not the way to enjoy fragrance, is it? The way to enjoy fragrance is to know your fragrances and to wear them. And yeah, taking a step back, going on a no buy for a couple of months or just, you know, going on even on a low buy for a few months can really be helpful to get you the time to allow you to try all of your fragrances and to get to know them properly. An unworn fragrance, a fragrance you don't know, is really just a frivolous purchase. Fragrance is expensive and it should be enjoyed because it's a luxury item, really. So yes, point 10 is to just take a step back and to take stock occasionally and to just be self-aware in a way. So that's my final piece of advice to myself. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed the video, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. 
And please let me know which one piece of advice would you give yourself when you were starting your own perfume collections? Have you fallen down any rabbit holes? I'd be really interested to know. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.